Uh, <laughs> or what kind of car was uh, it? <laughs> yeah. Herb, Herb Goldberg is uh, a PhD, a psychologist. It, you are in practice, and uh, you also are responsible for a book titled The Hazards of Being Male. This is round two, so to speak. Already I've got a macho analogy to describe what we're doing here. Round two, we're going to beat each other up, which, which, uh, which it goes right to the point of the book. Now, let's review some of the, some of the uh, information that we covered in our first program. We as men in this culture are huffing and puffing and desperately trying to prove that we're strong, that we're capable, that we can lead, and we're wearing ourselves out in this effort. And uh, also, we're dying. I mean, yeah, literally. I, I think even, even more than that, uh, what I've been trying to do uh, in uh, seminars I give in, and lectures I give is to uh, point out that the blueprint for traditional masculinity is a blueprint for self-destruction. And that on every level, on the body level, everything that we think of as being masculine, which is denial of pain, or the approach to pain, which is one in which the more pain you can take, the uh, more masculine you are. Well, pain is a life survival signal. The, the inability to ask for help, the resistance to passivity, which means sleeping is feminine. The you know, excuse me, but emotion. I remember as a kid, whenever, the, whenever uh, Joe Gordon played second base for the Indians, oh, yeah. whenever he got hit by a pitch, he went to first base without touching the part of his body where he got hit. If he's got hit in the shoulder, you know, if I ever got hit in the shoulder, whenever I got hit, I'd always go, ah, like that. He'd get hit, and he'd run to first base and wouldn't even touch it. And I thought, gosh, he's tough. Exactly. I want to be just like him. And so you get, uh, you get the phenomenon, what I call a, a body psychotic condition, which is that a lot of men are out of touch with their bodies. So consequently, you have that very, very uh, uh, masculine phenomenon, which is to feel great one day and to drop dead of a heart attack the next, yeah. which, if you think about it, is a bizarre phenomena, the fact that he wasn't in touch with the deterioration, unless you believe in devils and, right. and the punishments from above. Let me just make the point that you may have already noticed that all of the members of our audience today are men. This is a very unusual circumstance for the Donahue Show. In fact, it's only happened one time before, and that was round one of our discussion about the hazards of being male. Uh, if I ask, if I ask, if I stood up any one of these men in our audience and I said to them, how do you how do you feel? If I said, what bothers you? About being a man. Or no, just what, role of masculinity. Or, or no, just what bothers you? What is, what is your anxiety? I'll bet you that there's a significant, a significant percentage of these men who wouldn't be able to tell me because they don't know. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you agree with that? Well, I'm not sure about this particular audience because I think that we have... <laughs> That hand. I've got to tell you something. I have to, t I have to share something to you because I almost, I almost cried when I came out through the door because there were uh, six people here, men and their wives and kids, who drove in from Indianapolis to be here this morning and have apparently been using the book. And, and, and I was terribly moved by that. And I think it, it's an indicative of something happening in the consciousness of men. I had breakfast with uh, nine, seven men from the Chicago Men's Gathering. There's a whole different mood that's developing. Right. I, I, but we have to establish what it is that you're about. I mean, so what? I'm a man, and I feel terrific. Mm -hmm. And this is all a bunch of you're huffing and puffing, and there's no real problem. Now, if that's my attitude, you still haven't convinced me that there is. I'm not sure what your point is. Mm -hmm. So could you just give me some more examples? I mean, why should I be troubled? Well, uh, actually, if you would have asked that question uh, 10 years ago, I probably wouldn't have, had a, I wouldn't have had a chance to even talk to you. But the, the, the climate has changed so that because of the feminist movement, a lot of women are saying bye-bye to their men, or they're upsetting the balance. And all of a sudden, guys are getting in touch with their pain. And guys are beginning to recognize, one, how isolated they are, two, how vulnerable they are, Three, now with women more and more entering the workforce, men no longer can identify themselves as people through the job that they have, which makes a lot of them very vulnerable because they suddenly realize, without my job, I'm nobody. And I, nobody looks at me. I'm in, I become invisible. So the hazards are becoming more obvious and more manifest, along with the simple statistic that if any guy opened up his eyes could see, which is that... For example, in Illinois, which has the most disparate uh, statistic in all the country, you know they came out with longevity figures last week. The average male in Illinois lives to be 60, while the woman lives to be 73. 
So you've got a 13-year disparity. In fact, Illinois has the widest disparity, I think, in the whole nation. Right. You also believe that men in their 30s and 40s often have no real close male friends. No, no, we no have, buddies, right? We have, we have people we drink beer with and talk about the bears, <clears throat> but we don't have... We don't have friends that we can share pain with. Exactly, and I, I do a little, uh, a, a little exercise when I do my workshops, which I have people draw buddyship diagrams, which is uh, diagrams of their intimate, close, same-sex friends. And my definition of a buddy is a guy who calls you up at least once a month, just calls you up at least once a month for no other reason except that he cares how you feel. He doesn't want to sell you insurance. He doesn't want to play golf with you on Wednesday. He simply wants to know how you are, and yep. it's incredible the high percentage of men who don't have a single person who they have contact with on a but, personal level. But if I, if, if I ever called up some guy and said, how do you feel, and Charlie, I mean, he'd think I was weird. Exactly. All isn't right. that, isn't uh, that... I mean, that's too bad, you're saying. We don't well, see I mean, it's not right. too bad. It's, okay. it's a disaster. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Why? Why? Why are we so ready to punch each other in the nose. Now, give me your brief answer to that. Yeah, I, uh, we were, Phil and I were talking about that before. My perception is that the masculinity is defensive, rather, uh, whereas femininity is organic, which is to say that women in our culture are imprinted by women. They're raised by mother, grandmother, nursery school teacher. They have a feminine imprint, and then they become like the woman. In other words, they identify with women, and they become like women. Men are likewise imprinted by women mother, grandmother, school teacher, babysitter, but they somehow magically have to become men. And the way they do that is a fairly involved psychological uh, process, but it's a, it, Shakespeare called him, he thinks thou protesteth too much. The ego takes all the things they're terrified of inside of themselves, which is their emotions, their dependency, their passivity, uh, anything that's feminine, and twists it into its opposite, and they constantly have to prove that they are not what they are. Okay. So they're always in a kind of a hair trigger, Thing, uh, they can be pushed very easily into crazy behavior in trying to prove Does that. it follow that if a man is raised by a father only, that he's going to be less likely to jump out of the car and punch the next guy who gave him the finger in the nose, you know, when there's an obscene gesture on the highway? <clears throat> this isn't funny. It happens. Cars it, empty and guys literally kill it, themselves. It happened, it happened in L.A. Uh, two cars emptied and a guy got killed in several just because one guy made an obscene uh, uh, gesture. It all depends on whether, you know, you can also learn that. Now, the father may go this kid on, but I think that if he has a solid male identification and he really feels masculine, yeah. he'll, be less, he'll be less prone to doing instantaneous crazy right. types of things. Before we break here, they want me to break. Just give me some, I want to share some ideas with some of the men who've come here to be in our audience at considerable inconvenience. And how do you feel? Well, my feeling is that although some of these comments may be true as to older males, I think it's a stereotype. I think that a lot of men my age relate to other men, relate to other women. Yeah. And I think that uh, right. most of... May I ask, are you, how old? 26. You're 26. I think we're in the business of proving our worth and our masculinity. There, there, there's a theory that men go to war because women are watching. You ever hear that? I'm wondering if men don't go to war because men are watching. Well, I'll tell you something. I think war behavior is silly. Okay, of course you do. I mean, everybody says that. <laughs> everybody says that. But, but, oh, I mean, of course, but th that does not answer how we, why are we so capable of doing it? Why are we so capable of violence, all of us? Well, I think that it's enculturation, but I think that uh, violence does not have to be masculine. There are women who are displaying more violence right. in this day and age. All right. Now, let me go back just one more time about the business of trying to impress you. I want you to really be impressed with me. That's the point I'm trying to make. Now, some of the f consequences of my interest in your admiring me include, I will never share with you any real weakness that I have. For example, if a man, let's say a man has difficulty in a sexual encounter, difficulty performing. Mm -hmm. He will never share that with his male friends. If women are sexually dis... Now don't tell me more than I want to know.